Hello and welcome to Geek and Biscuits. <sighs> Dan, I can't even contain myself this week. Have I got a treat, Williams, for you? <laughs> oh, I believe you have. I believe you yes, have. yes. So yeah, the Phantom. Um, <laughs> no, I'm joking, everybody. Don't revolt. Um, we're talking about 1998's sci-fi action horror adventure. Sums it up. Yep. Deep Rising. Ooh, <laughs> State of the art special effects. We spare no expense. Yep, we did. Yep. So, um, where do you begin with a film like this? So, um, it was filmed on forty-five million dollar budget, I believe. Yep. Um, made back roughly eleven million of it. <laughs> um, yeah, which which is which is obviously not great, but it did. Um, it was competing with. Um, Titanic at the time yeah. went on a bit of a mammoth run across the box office, um, and I believe I. Well, before I go further, it's uh, the director was Stephen Sommers. It People was probably no more for um, the Mummy. The Mummy returns eventually to Van Helsing and GI Joe and and, and mm. stuff. Um, but the thing about it was is that he, I think he'd written the film um, as a homage to B movie classics. Yeah. Um, like in the mid ninety, early to mid nineties, um, when he was working for Hollywood Pictures as an offshoot of Disney, yeah. Um, and then, unfortunately, as delays happen and 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 things took place, he um, films like Anaconda and stuff like that started to come yeah. out before. So he, we kind of like um, the film was last out the gate. So do you feel before we even talk about like what you thought of the film? Do you think like that? Uh, its reputation so maybe why it didn't do as well and why people may not have heard of this film yeah it's possibly because i think the the the, the, the um post-production took almost a year um and completely over what they intended because i think they said that they just didn't um know how to do certain shots they just weren't, yeah weren't sure how to do certain things um which is when you're doing a big you know, and and then CG because we've had Jurassic Park and everyone was throwing CGI at the wall, for yeah. absolutely everything. Um, you know, they're still working out a lot of the kinks, and you know they had to go to ILM to do a lot of the visuals. Um, but obviously, like ILM being such a big you know, main studio, it's yeah, you know they're going to be quite busy. So I do think you know, I think it definitely had a massive effect, and then if it's going up against Titanic. Which was phenomenal at the box office, yeah. um, and it's it's and I, I don't <laughs> I, I I can see you know Titanic I I don't understand why <laughs> it made this yeah. much money as it did, um, yeah. but I, it did. So that's 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 the crux of it. Um, so yeah, I think it just got completely swallowed up. It was well, let's see, do we go and see one boat movie about yeah. a famous ship that sinks, or do we go and see another boat movie about a boat we don't know that sinks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I think uh, Treat Williams, the star, um, I'm sure he was quoted as saying something like, you've seen one boat movie, you've seen them all, <laughs> which, which is a bit harsh because um, this one is a little bit different than Titanic. Mm. And the creatures are less slimy than Leonardo DiCaprio for starters. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, I think um, as well that it does help that um, sort of uh, Mr. Ebert it was, you know, reviews count for something in the in, in the US. Uh, yeah. Hold a lot of weight. I think he put it on one of his his most hated list. Yeah, and the bomb yeah, of nineteen ninety eight. Wow, he absolutely slated it. And yeah. I think unfairly, I really do think unfairly because it's it's a great film. It's a nice yeah. little. It's a great little B movie. It's not, you know, it doesn't outstay as well because it's not sort of oh. Well, it's over the top, but it's not. I've seen a lot worse films in that genre. Um, yeah. And yeah. a lot worse films that don't have characters, you know, characters like this one does. And there's some great actors in it. Oh, it's, it's, got, really a, it's got a great actors. little cast, hasn't it? And when I say little cast, it's actually, the cast's quite big. And yeah. although, because let, let's let's start things out. We've got the, we've got Treat Williams, um, mm. Kevin J. O'Connor. <laughs> yeah, I can't help but smile every time <laughs> Treat Williams is mentioned. Um, Famke Hansen. Yep. Um, and you'd maybe say that they're the three three leads to, yeah. to a degree. Um, then you've got like 
big characters and big actors like Wes Studi. He was brilliant. Yeah, was just the most reliable actor, probably one of the most reliable actors. Yeah, you know, working at the time, you know, that you could ask for. Um, then you've got like other characters, supporting characters like um, Anthony Heald is is a good yeah. character actor. Yeah. Um, and then you've got like his t- um, West Studios team of mercenaries, which were all um, <laughs> maybe not so much then, but you know, maybe now have gone on to have quite um, prolific careers. Yeah. So and even though some people are killed off relatively early, it is a it is a monster movie. Um, I do feel that, like you said, it's that out, nothing outstays its welcome. No character outstays the welcome. So if someone's killed off first, then it's kind of we got everything. I feel like Stephen Thomas got everything we needed from that person yeah, before they yeah, were disposed yeah. of. So. Yeah, not, not no point am I sat there thinking, oh my god, like the mercenaries are a you know a bunch of bastards, but they're fun to watch, yeah. <laughs> really fun to watch. Well, that's the fun thing about this film is that everyone's a bit of a bastard. There's no straight clear cut heroes or heroines because right at the start of the film, Treat Williams and his crew, um, the, the guns for hire essentially. They're, yeah, if the money's though, uh, sorry, if the money's there, they don't care. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's just sorry. it's just a job to them. They don't care what's going on. Yeah. They're not particularly yeah. interested in what's going on. Um, They've got to get them into the shit in the first place. That so they just don't ask questions, do they? That's it. Yeah, and then Thomas Janssen's a thief. Yeah. So yeah, there's not one person in that film whose whose moral compass is set. <laughs> set such you not is it no no yeah. not at all not at all so yeah. it does make it very interesting because um you know as we'll talk about and focus more on the plot in a moment uh, there's a scene with um is it simon canton which is anthony mm-hmm. L's character which he's yeah. he's the guy who um he he's the owner of the the boat the cruise liner yeah. um who um i think they, they obviously accuse him of being again less than less than um well it's not really a, a very nice accusation the label at him the label him as a bit of a murderer don't they for for, yeah. for what he does his little betrayal of his crew but what i like is that you've got like you said you've got thieves and and, and henchmen and and guns for eye are all accusing him of this and he's like hang on a second i'm you know i'm not a murderer i might be a crook but i'm not a murderer <laughs> <laughs> well that's it it's it's, it's it's plan sort of his plan wasn't to endanger any life was it? It was just a recoup of shit ton of money, um, and unfortunately, all the things were were going on. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's even a bit at the end, isn't there, where he's um, outside the ship looking for a way off, and he just looks at all the mayhem and he smiles to himself and he thinks it's going to sink. And he's got this nice little <laughs> glint in his eye and smile on his face. <laughs> what a shit! <laughs> yeah, yeah, he is. Um, he is a shit. Nick Nolte shitter brother. <laughs> yeah, Nick Nolte shitter brother, yeah. It's like the yeah. clone Nick Nolte and he came out about, you know, sort of foot off. Uh, yeah, and less, yeah. Uh, less drunk. <laughs> less drunk. <laughs> <laughs> so, can you remember your first viewing of this film? Um, uh, mine is, I always kind of categorise this kind of film like The Relic, um, mm, Mimic, yeah, um, yes. films that came out that I'd probably watched on VHS, but when I came to watch them again, it was DVD. Yeah. That's kind of the like late 90s, early 2000s, where DVD was just taking off, weren't it? Yeah, yeah. I think, I honestly think, it might have been at your house, you know. Do you think it was the... I think it might have been, it might have been one of our, our legendary stayovers. Yeah, yeah. We used, to, we used to love popping each other's movie uh, film cherries, didn't we? <laughs> <laughs> And the rest. <laughs> <laughs> no, but seriously, I do, I do think, yeah, because yeah. it was, um, I really do think it was. I think it was one of the nights that, uh, obviously staying over, we, people who obviously don't know us in the audience, um, we went to college together, we used to stay over quite a bit. Because yeah. um, it's just easier, because Grant lived closer to college than what I did. So rather yeah. than popping it all the way back to, to my town and saving me a bus. Yeah, in Mexico, yeah. <laughs> Not to climb me back over the border. Um, it's, it's easier to... <laughs> where I live, it's, it's about the same. <laughs> yeah. But, um, yeah, it's... Uh, <laughs> countless people trying to get out. <laughs> looking yeah. for better prospects. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it just saved me, it saved me a bus or a train fare. I got yeah. fed. Um, when I went and, and, and we did get on <laughs> as well. We did get on, yeah. It wasn't, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just sit there and... and um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 
you can take the floor. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, that's that's it. I th- I, I, I'm honestly, I, I'm under- I'd like to say, oh yeah, no, let's let's just say for argument's sake, because I'm prattling on now. Um, it was at your house. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it it might was DVD, DVD night at your house. Yeah, I believe so. I believe so. Um, there's a nice little film I do remember introducing you to, um, The Frighteners. So oh, f- films like that did happen. We did, like, yes. you, you You introduced me to The Prophecy, I believe, at yours mm. uh, yeah. when I went to Mexico. Um, yeah, so <laughs> it's, <laughs> yeah, so I I believe that there used to be, again, there used to be a blockbuster in, in a couple of the towns close to us, but, but my own town where I was, there used to be a little video store. Yeah. And um, much like you were, t- you know, telling us about your um, your dad last week could take you and your siblings to pick up some movies. Yeah, I think me and my sister often went with my dad and I think he used to pick a couple. And um, I, I do remember picking films, but I also remember he used to just grab some films, even if we were like, if he was on the way to pick us up from school and um, or wherever we were then. And, and, he, and um, I could just remember getting the uh, red case, or whatever it was. It might have been something like Venus Entertainment or something. <laughs> Nothing to do with video. Um, <laughs> it's as dodgy as anything. <laughs> it does, yeah, it really does. Um, and I can remember just just watching this film and thinking you know it was like a bit of a throwback a bit of a just fun just just fun and it's unashamedly fun it it's 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 a homage to classic um adventure classic horror classic disaster movies almost um and in fact i'm going to say that that might have been the first time i watched the film but actually i do remember picking up my first ever copy of empire magazine yeah, and getting a free VHS with it that was full of of trailers and uh, Deep yeah. Rising was, and the trailer was genius because it didn't show a single cast member. It just showed a little scene of where the crew of the 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 sorry the passengers and the crew of the uh, cruise liner were running away. You know the scene in the film where the um, yeah. Asian lady makes it to the bathroom. She's really panicking and something like drags her through the toilet and blood splats oh. all over the mirror. I <laughs> yeah burrito night <laughs> but um yeah and I, that that's the first time i remember thinking i'd really like to watch that film and then i do remember um you know watch, watching it myself and again then it led into dvd where we were both like all at the time amazed by the, the picture quality and the effects and and yeah. things so i think it's a film that's just aged gracefully I might just say yeah. like it's fine wine, but it just seems to uh, it's uh, it's exactly how I remember it. <laughs> it's it's age grace for the light like, treat Williams. It it has yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. It, re- it really has that. Um... I, I I actually uh, sorry to interrupt, but I, I was going to say my first um, contact with Deep Rising, not watching it, was ITV mm. used to show a stunt show. We had on on uh, the ITV was for those who don't know was the third channel. Um, in the UK um, for a very yeah. long time and um, well it still is but it was like the only other than sort of out of the four channels we had ITV was channel three uh, and it was on a Saturday lunchtime they had movies games and videos oh I remember that what a, which yeah, was, was really what a show yeah and it was half yeah. an hour of just everything that was coming out you look at little clips little interviews and everything um, and then later on it was it was stunts of Hollywood or something like that and it was like it yeah. ran for, for a year or something and they showed you stunts from classic films and then they showed you for stunts from upcoming Start, stuff starting to ring a bell starting yeah a bell. and one of it was they showed you um, them doing the um, jet ski stunt uh-huh. um, and they mentioned it was obviously i didn't pick up on it, it was deep rises at the time so they mentioned the jet they showed you the jet ski stunt and the um uh the guests in the big atrium area or whatever yeah. you call it um yeah, i think yeah yeah, uh, with all that like, falling through glass plate windows and stuff like that and being shoved about. And that was the other stunt that they showed from it. It was like they were about big scale stunts and that. Um, so that was stuck in my mind. So when I came to watch it, it was like, you know, it's like, even like a couple of years later, you go, oh, yeah. Oh, that's yeah. where that was from. Yeah. 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 <laughs> that, that really <laughs> stuck out in my mind because I've, obviously I've seen it since then. And I've since seen it at yours. Um, I think it took me a little while to get uh, around to DVD. Simply because I bought everything on VHS at that point, um, yeah. 
So, uh, also Blockbuster used to do ex rental titles, so you could yes. buy stuff that yeah. they, they were getting, you know, when wasn't particularly doing well uh, on the, the rental charts. Um, and it was always a little bit, you know, they, they were cheaper than going to the normal video shop or, mm-hmm. or whatever, yeah. but the cases were massive. Oh, they were huge, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, and, huge. And me and you who like everything to line up on a shelf, when you've got yeah. your normal VHS, um, got plastic boxes over here in the, the UK, I know they do cardboard in, in the US, um, but you get so many like that, and then you've got massive... <laughs> massive ones. Lord, if you have massive ones, they expensive ones. And then you've got your Star Wars special editions that were like really streamlined... Yeah, the little silver or gold ones that didn't have the yeah. little lip on the edge. Yeah. Oh, nightmare. Absolute nightmare. Shocking. Yeah, absolutely <laughs> shocking. And I, 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 I really do believe that um, it, it was intentional. I believe it was intentional. Yeah. I believe they just thought, you know what, these guys have had it too good. Not just us, just any any video <laughs> or, or DVD collector. Um, yeah. Because you just. And, and the worst thing, sorry if this is a bit of a tangent, is when you get a film collection and you'll get your, down the spine, you'll have like the certificate, yeah. you'll have the obviously title of the film, then you'll get like a little square with maybe a character face in and it'll go mm-hmm. for three films and the last one, it'll be nowhere to be seen or it'll be at the bottom and you just think, you bastard. <laughs> they've done it, they've done it on, yeah. on Blu-rays now, if they do it, the, the Marvel yeah. stuff, like the first series, like the, the phase one of Marvel, all the, the pictures are on, you know, up at the top of the spine and then phase two they're all underneath they're all at the bottom yeah. it's like no no yeah no no <laughs> and, and we have mentioned in a previous podcast that that is that's maybe not specifically why but you do your own um blu-ray disc covers so Stop yeah it. there's no reason why yeah so yeah. i've got myself to blame if it's shit <laughs> <laughs> yeah absolutely and it is frustrating as it as um even just for space, even if it's nothing to do with like the look of the collection, just for space, it's it's really frustrating when you think to yourself. I mean, some of the old DVD collections. I don't. I mean, I'm I'm looking at like before I bought any of the Game of Thrones because I've not seen it, couldn't get anywhere, so I waited for the till they were cheap. I saw um, like a seventy pound edition, and then yeah. went down to like forty pounds, and I thought, you know what, I'll pick it up, and I'd look at it, and you open it up. And it is just cardboard that's not even decorated or painted, and it's just like not even sleeves you put them in. So it's, I think that's pretty. I think also that's a bit of a, you know, that's very offensive to me because I think that you're paying <laughs> such a lot of money, and the and the discs themselves just not treated well, or it's not nice. And it again, it like takes up more space than it should do for just some, yeah. you know, a bunch of discs. <laughs> so um, now that we've put the world to rights about that, <laughs> um, <laughs> so the film. Um, <laughs> <laughs> For people who've not um, or might have tuned in to hear us talk about that, I'm not about um, come and look at my Blu-ray collection that I'm pissed <laughs> off about. Um, <laughs> so it is predominantly a B movie, monster movie kind of, but it has got themes running through it. That's why I think makes it so exciting. And, and just listening to the score as well, you get the when it, the film first starts, you get almost like a a sense of a. <laughs> not a parody of Jaws, but almost like a, a, a off-key montage of Jaws, like just recognising like a bit of a wink to the audience as in like may have one or two notes and then it get, goes into its own little little thing. Um, and then the next minute you've kind of got the heroic kind of um, music when we get introduced to Treat Williams's nice little shithole of a boat. <laughs> um, and it's just a, a complete mix and medley of different kind it, of it, it is yeah it's unusual yeah. for a score it is oh, yeah it's, yeah it's jerry goldsmith um yes I'm it is right yeah. insane yeah yeah, yeah. It, it makes me wonder whether he had a collection of themes and because steven summers was maybe sort of said it is a big mash of you know yeah you know this that and other i wonder whether he just had his got he opened a drawer and went oh that's a drawer for monster movie themes and that's a draw for adventure themes and that's for you know let's just yeah. shuffle these pages together and but i and think see. it works because of the oh, yeah. touching yeah. on all the genres doesn't it i think yeah. that's yeah. that's why I'm, I'm i'm really impressed and it is i was um because i watched the film like before podcast we we like to obviously watch the films before because sometimes we've we, it might be a film we watch you know quite recently for, for me i've probably not seen this film since 2002 three 
So it's been it's been that long. Long, long time. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, like, just just from my perspective, um, I I went and um, looking um, see what other people thought about the score, to see what people thought about the film. Just just you know, as you do, it's interesting to see. You know, if your if your um, enjoyment aligns with everybody else's, yeah. to see if yeah, and I was amazed at the amount of people that were like, yeah, love this, love this soundtrack, yeah, great, got this in my car. This this is, the, do you know what I mean? It's it's almost like sometimes you can, you know, like the Rocky soundtrack. You think you can imagine people taking that to the gym with the yeah. Rocky Four. I mean, I mean that's yeah, that's yeah. 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 But this one's like the amount of people saying, "Oh yeah, this bit's for when I do this, and 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 this bit's for when I do that," and like, "Oh yeah, the the scene where I think it is the speedboat at the end where it mixes the kind of main heroic theme in with it, yeah. almost sounds like a tropical Caribbean kind of twist to it when it yeah. gets going." Yeah, and this guy was like, "Oh yeah, this is when I start the barbecue up outside," and it's just and it just <laughs> I know these are quite funny comments, but it's like um, it just did like hammer home to me like the just complete mix of themes just not just the score but the film and it, it really does it just works it is yeah. like it is like everybody just decided to jump in a blender and switch it on and it was like this is what we got <laughs> that's it and it's nice because let's say something about the opening is before you've been introduced to any of these characters you get the creature's eye view you know you get the opening um sort of uh title card what you know tells you about creatures living you know deep down in the, the ocean and yeah, it's like the South China Sea, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And it says uh, you could fit you could fit the Grand Canyon in it. <laughs> yeah. Um, so he goes on about how deep things go, and it it was nice then because you get that straight away. You're introduced to the scale of this thing from its point of view, and you see um, yeah. warships and it's a galleon. There's a there's a full size you know pirate galleon that's yeah. there as well. It's just sort of swimming past everything. And then starts heading towards the surface, and I think there's that sort. Of, so you get that, and then you get about half an hour of character introductions, and yeah. not a moment's wasted. It's, no, um, not at all. Yeah, here's your crew. You know, here's your, your no nonsense. Um, slightly like oh, this is the thing about Treat Williams, is especially his performance that he he presents. A very everyman quality, yeah. But there's that little bit of an edge to him, like, yeah. Because you start, it's very much like you know he's, he's supposed to be watching where he's going, um, you know, sort of piloting the boat, but he's playing cards on the computer. You know, he's, <laughs> yeah. almost, that takes a very relaxed approach to his his job, um, yeah. even though it looks like you know we we know it's dangerous work because it, the back of his chair he's got a shotgun strapped to it. Yeah. So they, they put little elements in there that make it, you know, let you know that he's he's no nonsense, but he's a pretty chilled out guy. And I only found out earlier that apparently it was um, the role was offered Harrison Ford. Yeah, um, I can remember hearing that. Would would have made a completely different film. Um, yeah. Which also, when Ford turned it down, the budget reduced quite a bit as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What did it drop from probably like in its hundreds to, or over a hundred yeah. surely to, to like 45 million? We'll give you ten dollars. <laughs> We've got treat Williams, so, we'll give you twenty dollars. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, so you got um, I can't remember, I've really poor memory, I can't remember the actress's name. Um, who was the other uh, his uh. I don't know. She's assistant. She was Kevin Kevin J O'Connor's girlfriend in it. Was... Yes, yeah. Um, yeah. I, re- I think most people recognise her from the Spider Man, the first Sam Raimi Spider Man film, don't they? They they. Um, she's the one who's the tour guide, I believe, that introduces yeah. them to all the spiders and yeah. stuff. Cause I don't think she's actually acted in years. Really? No, yeah, I think two thousand seven was the last. Oh, she's good in that. She's really good. And I do apologise for not, not remembering her name. Um, but then you get um, Kevin J. O'Connor as well. Yeah. So it might, I think most people will remember him from The Mummy. Um, yeah. Is, Benny. Uh, Benny, yeah. Hey, yeah. O'Connor! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's such a charismatic whiny shit. <laughs> this is a weird thing, isn't it? Because 
he in the mummy, he's Benny's you're not you're not meant to like Benny at all. No. Yeah, you know, he's just slime, he's a sleazy little he's a ferret in human form. And he's <laughs> he's with his little pencil mustache and you know, he's groveling to anything that'll take notice. Um and obviously Igor in Van Helsing, uh, and you said earlier before we start recording that he's 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 not given a great deal to do. He's covered in pros- heavy prosthetics and very sort of, his dialogue's very stunted. And he's yeah. sort of, it's like his his only direction for that film was your ego. So whatever you think ego is, do that, and that's yeah. about it. Whereas it's a shame because he's so good in this, and that's not yeah, just the same music going around saying. Oh, they're so good in this. They're so good in this. It's because he genuinely is. It's, it's, it's Joey. You, you you like it. He's likable. Um, well, if you to look yeah. at his career, like we said, from like GI Joe to Van Helsing, we looked at it backwards. He, yeah. he, he, it makes more sense because, mm. he, like you said, in um, in the Mummy, and then in 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 this, in Deep Rising, he does have. He does have things to do. He is interesting. He is pivotal at times, and and I mean, in this film, he, he he's ad libbing. I mean, the scene where um, they have to go into the water, and he turns around to Frank Kantz and then just says, <laughs> "Can you get asthma?" <laughs> just <laughs> just off the cuff. And apparently, like everybody cracked up at that, and he's just he was throwing in so many of these yeah. kind of like one liners to break up tension and things, and and, and to think that he's probably like his film roles I'm not saying they get worse but it's almost like he's less trusted to do anything yeah. or have any creative output it, and that's it's it, is that a fault of being mates with Stephen Summers because again Stephen Summers output has gone you think you know, Deep Rising um, The Mummy which was you know I, I thought it was phenomenal um, such great Great ride, such a great time watching that film. More returns, less so because I think it's a very typical Hollywood sequel. Throw more money at it and see what sticks. And yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah, some bad, bad CGI. Um, but then, yeah, let's not talk about the rock. <laughs> yeah, Van Helsing is such a was su- such a promise for you know. I love, I absolutely adore the Universal monsters. They're those classic, can- yeah. you know, you know I, I love those interpretations. The thirties and forties films. Um, so to see them together on the big screen um, again with mm. you know, updated effects and everything, and it was such, a, I'll be honest, a little tiny little tangent, we're still sort of talking about Stephen Summers and that, but when I went to see Van Helsing at the cinema, I had to leave halfway through because I had a migraine. I never knew that. <laughs> yeah, I saw it up oh, wow. to where they um, pull Frankenstein out of, I think, it's, is it the eye or... Yeah, like, yeah. So, pretty Frankenstein's monster up, um, and I just I went I went to the bathroom and I wasn't very well. Um, oh, bless you! And I was with Martin Johnson at the time, and oh. uh, we, we come from college. Yeah, yeah. To watch it, and I went home. I had to get an extra and I was. I what, was did, did he stay and watch the film or? I'm not he... entirely sure. You know. Yeah. I remember, and I only saw it. Um, I think a few years later when it was on a release. Uh, I didn't get a migraine then, but it was probably a sign. <laughs> it was yeah. probably a sign. But, and then G.I. Joe, which I just caught idly on the telly, mainly because Dennis Quaid was in it. Um, yeah, great. Yeah. So I thought I'd give it a go. Um, and yeah, he's, O'Connor's wasted in that. It's, it's, it's a cameo at best. And yeah. I think it was just he was there because he, he was still a friend of Stephen Summers. And I, I do wonder if that's a, a, a kind of a detriment to him, you know, yeah, yeah, is that he's sort of stuck by his friend, which is great, and his friend's still giving him roles, but his career's not taken off like it should have. It should have been. I don't think he was ever going to be a typical leading man, but it was no, no, of course not. It could have been, you know, the the not necessarily always the comic relief, no. but you know, he's he could have been big. Yeah, yeah, he's he's. I, th- I do forget the actor, so I'll have to apologise. And I'm sure it was the actor last week you told me, the guy that played Rorschach and Freddy Krueger. Yeah, and you, yeah. yeah, like a, somebody like him, like could yeah. do different kind of parts, could do a few horror parts, could do a few sleazy parts, could do a few kind of like parts where you, you, you feel pity for him. Because I think he's yeah. in, in this film, you do kind of, he's, he's probably the one character that you actually quite feel for. Yeah, I think I think you want to be mates with Treat Williams, don't you? 
Yeah, yeah. I watched that watching the film. <laughs> <laughs> well, I watched it with my family last night, and um, any time something was was going to happen to to Joey, to Kimmy Joe O'Connor's character, um, my other half would go, "Oh!" <laughs> or she pull the face, the bottom lip would come out, and yeah, you know, yeah, as in, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. So, he was. Um, he, I, yeah, I do find him to be the one that you do the audience identifies with probably more than. Yeah. Anything. I think you're right. I think Treat Williams is the um is 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 good as a leading man because I've seen some criticism for him. Like like you said, facts factually, they did drop the budget of the film when they um Harrison Ford turned it down and Treat Williams yeah. uh took the role. But um also I've seen some criticism for him for his performance and for what he doesn't bring, but yeah. I don't really see that myself. I, I, I think it's great. I think the problem is having Harrison Ford did Harrison Ford, and I think a film like this didn't need a big star. No, no. I think Tree Williams has got very much... He, he had that sort of... Um, there was a, a confidence to him. He was cocky, but he didn't oversell it. He, yeah. wasn't, he wasn't a hand solo. No. Maybe that's what Stephen Summers wanted when they were looking at Harrison Ford. Maybe they wanted a hand solo, sort of roguish... Character. It's it's almost like <laughs> Treat Williams is almost like in this this role. It's like your dad's decided to buy a boat, and yeah. Go off and you know and just make some money on Sly. You know? Yeah, absolutely. And that, yeah. That's the only question is, Daddy will be back at weekend. And I'll bring you some back some nuts. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and, and and he even plays into that, doesn't he? Because he's it's like where um where Joey, which is Kevin J. O'Connor's character, snooping around on the bottom of the ship because he's wondering what these um, mercenaries are that they're um, that they're transporting to the middle of the ocean for some strange reason. Um, and he finds, like, a couple of um, missiles or yes, you know, torpedoes, yeah. yeah. Um, and they all obviously, like, kick the shit out of him. Um, and when his, his, the mechanic, his girlfriend, tells Treat Williams, which is it's Finnegan, his, his character, yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah, and she tells him, you need to go and sort something out. And he's like, what are you kidding me? Those guys are dangerous. <laughs> like, straight away, you get a laugh and a sense of, hang on a second, yeah, these guys aren't heroic at all. They yeah. just, yeah, it is the, it is literally the money. Um, and then you're introduced to his, like you said pretty much early on, is his, um, why everyone's busy busting the balls on the ship. He's playing yeah. cards. But you do get that sense that he, you know he doesn't mess around and then within you get a few like a slight comic relief moment yeah and then the next minute he's um he's downstairs um you know with hitting somebody in the face <laughs> with a <an> hopping <laughs> gun <laughs> pointed in yeah yeah, yeah. That's um, that's it. it's cool because it, you get that sense of that he's you know he's 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 a cool guy who's who's happy to have a, a laugh and a joke but you know he's he's not afraid to do the dirty stuff as well yeah. And that comes into play with, like you said, you know, the the, the mercenaries. Ooh, at that point, we don't know why they're there. No, they're just there. They're going out in the middle of the ocean, um, led by West Studi, uh, who is just so he's so cool. Well, he's, awesome. that, um, he's he, yeah. He, I was just going to say awesome. I don't think there's any other word for him. There's a, a few films, isn't there, that he's been in, and um, he, he's just that calmness personified. Mm. Yeah, yeah, and he's it's just whatever they're up to, you know, this guy's got his shit together, so you know that the, the his his guys are yeah. gonna follow suit. And, but it's nice that you get a little while Kevin J. O'Connor's snooping around. You get the little scene where they're trying to make one of the mercenaries sick. You know, he's, he's got seasickness. Yeah. Excuse me, he's got seasickness, and you know, then you have got um, I don't I've got to pronounce his name right. Uh, is it Jimin? Hansu. Yes, yeah. Yeah. Um, and uh, he's at competition with, uh, I can't remember the actor's name, but it plays Billy. Um, yeah. And they're trying to see who can make him throw up again. <laughs> throw up, yeah. Um, and then you've got Jason Fleming, obviously, who's had a very good career. Yeah. Um, uh, fr- not from this, but, you know, just, just in general. Anyway. Uh, and he's sort of taking part, and he's having a laugh and a joke. So you get that sort of banter between those. And even though you, you know that they're going to be bastards, you get like a, a you get that camaraderie. Um, yeah, yeah, all, uh, which is great to well, see. 
Well, the guy that um, the mercenary that is the one that um, is sick eventually is the guy who plays um, Kano in the Mortal Kombat he film. Was, yeah. I think, yeah, and he's sadly yeah. passed away, didn't he? He's, he's, he did uh, only forty. Yeah, he wasn't yeah, really yeah. yeah. No, no, and um, he was. I think that he, he's he had a bit of a court following. To be fair, looking looking on his like um, his Wikipedia and and, and yeah. some of the films that he's been in, so it's a bit of a shame, really, isn't it? Because he, yeah, um, yeah he fitted. <laughs> And it's it's he's the first to go, and yeah. um, I believe he is. Yeah, I think he is the first to go. Um, and it's again, it's not a thankless role, but you're the first to go, so obviously you've got less screen time than everybody yeah. else. But he's still memorable. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and it's, it's not uh, just him; it's every, everybody is. But it's such a shame when, obviously, like when an actor like that, maybe from like you said, some of the people that did star in this went on to have decent careers so yeah. used to say wouldn't have been any different well, that's it isn't it i mean you so see so you've got and again they've all had some, some really good roles sort of post this so it's you know like i said no roles sort of like this um but you get that nice setup and you get that you, you can see their bonding and even though when shit you know kicks off you get you know the, the whole thing about it's got the harp into the guy's face and you know, he just turns around to West Syria and says, you know, this could get messy. And it's, they need yeah. each other. At, at that point, they, they do need, you know, the mercenaries need the, the crew, the crew need the, you know, they need the money of the mercenaries. Um, but meanwhile, shit's kicking off on the ship. Yeah. And that ocean liner wasn't based on any real, you know, they just designed something new, so it wasn't you know, based on anything. Um, it's, it's like, meant to be the biggest thing on top of the ocean, isn't it? It's, it it's huge. Yeah, yeah. Um, but again, on the ship, we've got some great actors. Um, yeah. And uh, I know you mentioned um, the anti Hel- healed. Yeah. Healed. Yeah. Held, the, healed. Uh, yeah. Who was yeah. Uh, you know, Dr. Chilton? Is it Chilton in yeah, Science of the Lamb? Lamb. Um, and he's equally as deplorable and Weasley in this. He's, oh, absolutely. You know, yeah. Um, and it's. Uh, and then sort of obviously getting used to Thank you. He's got one character. of the best lines though in the film. You know, at the end when he's um he's chasing Famke Ants and he wants the uh speedboat keys yeah. and he's got the flare gun and she goes, What about everything? He goes, Fuck 'em <laughs> just <laughs> <laughs> his delivery. I'd forgot about that until I watched that last night. And that is probably one of the best deliveries of fuck 'em <laughs> I've ever seen. It's brilliant. <laughs> but yeah, you sort of get introduced to Frankie Anson, who's um pin you know, she's just Stealing wallets and you know, I mean, there's a vault on board. Well, these very, very rich people. She's um, out, yeah. She's just she's she's out. She's not out to hurt anyone. She's just yeah. getting rich quick, isn't she? Um, but she gets caught and thrown in the brig. Um, yeah. And while she's in there, um, the you know, this something we don't see for a very long time no. attacks the ship. Um, the, the Asian woman gets dragged down the toilet. Um, people running, and screaming, you know, everywhere. And when the the crew of the, and the mercenaries finally board the ship, it's a ghost ship. There's yeah. no one around. Absolutely no one around. And it's really nice because you, you've gone from again, you've got the opening, which is a bit of mystery. You know, you're some. You know, the camera point of view is you something big swimming around the bottom of the ocean to being. Right now, as we're setting up a typical action film, yeah, you know, or you know, or action heist film, and it's frantic, yeah. And then now we're into you know, sort of horror territory with this a bit similar to Alien, you know, going yeah. around empty corridors and um and things Finding and blood and yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so it's all these different genres are just sort of marrying together really, really well. And then finally, it all sort of kicks off, and it's yeah. not just—it's not even from the outset that it's not just then, right? So we were straight into being movie monster world, you know, and people getting yeah. killed off one by one and everything. Yes, that does happen, but there's other plot lines going on. Yeah, because yeah. You know, the ship's being sabotaged, and yeah. you get the idea that mm, yeah, the ship's being sabotaged. So you know, we find out that uh, Anti Hill's character and West Studio's character know each other. So you know, that all comes about that. You know, he's hired, you know, I think he's hired West Studio to come and, you know, sink the ship for him for the insurance money. 
Yeah. But Adiels was going to make off with the stuff in the vault as well. He wasn't just going to... Yeah. <laughs> yeah he wasn't just going to rob his own shit. <laughs> yeah, that's it, yeah. So he's a complete and utter twat. Um, <laughs> but then obviously, like, you know, he didn't expect, and what we said earlier, he didn't expect everyone to, to die. So when we do finally, you know, after after sort of scaring around the ship, when the mercenaries do finally open the vault um, and find it, Jim and Hans who gets an axe in the face, <laughs> um, straight out of the way, uh, and and the people who are who have survived, the ones who don't get shot in the process, uh, yeah, just get opened up on by yeah, the rest of the yeah. mercenaries. Yeah, they're completely terrified. Yeah. And the missions don't know what they're on about. They haven't encountered anything yet. So then you do get those sort of sneaky moments. You get those little sneaky moments where, you know, like, oh, I'm going to go and check this out. And still you don't see anything. And it, it yeah. carries on like that until when you do see what's going off, it's a rearing tentacle that's all closed up. It pulls out and then it's just, it opens up and it's mandibles and teeth and nastiness. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And the way the CG works is it's so quick. The yeah. effects on this so fast, and and it and I think it helps. I think because this, you could you could argue modern on this could say well the CGI is a bit crap or it's da- you know it's dated or whatever. Um, and I'm very much like you. I appreciate what what they were doing at the time. I don't worry yeah. too much about how it's now. I just appreciate the, the, what the intention was. So I can really appreciate that. There's a lot of work going into that because it's it's not just one. T- if it is one tentacle, it's backed up by itself. It's quite a, a large yeah. system of you know tentacles, isn't it? It's so it's Yeah, yeah. It's and I think it's all everywhere where it's shot, it um it's it's never like focused in like broad daylight. I know you're on a ship and stuff, but it's not completely underneath like a, a source of lighting, is it? It's, it um, doesn't mean it's shot exclusively in the shadows. But I think, like you said, I think the, the, there's been a lot of thought put in to, to where they've where the encounters are, what yeah. part of the ship. And I think, like you said, because they move so quickly, I think that that really does help. That I mean, like I would say that when you see the tentacles as there are, mm. like with, before they open up and show the teeth, I would say that probably still I'd, I'd say that's acceptable CGI from today's yeah. standards. Myself, I think when they open up and show the mouth. Again, you can tell a little bit because I think in early CGI, teeth and eyes were the giveaway, weren't they? Yeah. Like, easily. Um, and then when it, obviously what we'll talk about later is the, the bigger reveal of uh, of what's been uh, <laughs> lurking around. Uh, that's where it, it falls down a little bit. But that, again, it falls down a little bit by today's standards and by somebody watching it just for the effects and going, oh, OK. Whereas, as to me, you know, I appreciate what they were trying to do at the time. And yeah. and I think the fact that the film doesn't take itself seriously, it okay. can get yeah. away with it as well. <laughs> It's, I mean, there's nice little elements like, that you find in like the Poseidon adventure where they have to swim, you know, because the, the, the ship's filling up with water, so they've got to swim under. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think that makes me laugh because there's a bit where Treat Willing, it's stuck out last night, because Treat Willing says, um, when I get to the other side, I'll fire two shots so you know I've got there safe. And he climbs out the other side, and they're all waiting, like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Wait for the shots, and he doesn't. He never fires his gun. Never fires his gun. No, <laughs> he would no. never know if he was still alive. They were just like, <laughs> it's like he got to the side. I went, nah, I'm not going to waste my bullets. Fuck him. But I do like the, um, you know, when they are waiting for them, and it's um, they get the gun, and Famke Hansen's got a gun, and she shoots, and the recoil blows her straight into the water, <laughs> so she's already has to go down. Yeah. And then I like the fact that Kevin O'Connor. Um, he, he he's stood there with the other mercenary Mason, I think I think it is, and he's shooting at the uh, tentacles and the creature, and he runs out and he doesn't have no thought for the other guy. He just kind of like like looks at him, throws his gun down, <laughs> dives straight in the water. So it is that kind of like playfulness of not like oh you before me these heroic kind of gestures. It's kind of like again the audience buy it because it's like if that was me. And I was with a bunch of people I didn't know. Fuck them. <laughs> back, to, back to Anthony's favourite phrase. Yeah. I've been in that water so quick. <laughs> people think well, David Asseloff's down there. <laughs> well, it's a nice thing as well, because there were some really nice practical effects as well, especially like, uh, I, I appreciate, obviously, we, 
we've we've done six. This is like the sixth film we've we've covered, and this is the third film where we're going to talk about Rob Boutine. <laughs> um, yeah, he's what a guy. And it, yeah, and it just stands out that you know he's again it's it's another film that we love, and he's had his hand you know in it, and he's and and I think there's there's some really nice you know the doors bending inwards. There's that lovely shot of the corridor where the tentacles are moving on the yeah. inside of the walls, so the the walls sort of you know, uh, yeah. concave a little bit and everything. Um, and I was reading that he, um, they wanted a shot where the tentacles were sort of attacking people, but they wanted like a straight shot, like a practical effect. Yeah. So they asked Rob Boutine to make, so could he make a, a tentacle for them? And he, he didn't get pregnant for about two, three weeks. And they're getting worried and a crate turned up with six tentacles, identical tentacles in it. Identical tentacles, and uh, another, another T-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> really impressed. I've, I've really impressed my identical tentacles. There you uh, go. <laughs> and uh, yeah, with, uh, along with six cannons to fire them out. Oh of. wow! Uh, and apparently, when, when Bobby Johnson and, and Treat Williams found about the battle, they weren't too keen on, <laughs> on being shot at close range. <laughs> Of <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's all up there on screen. And you get again to sort of follow through, and people get killed off, and the the shoot open one of the, and this is one of my fa- absolute favourite effects in this film that I thought stood up incredibly well, and it was uh, Billy who was left on the boat looking after the uh, the engineer, um, and we don't see him get taken. No. Uh-oh. So the only time we get to find out about his death is with the shoot open one of these tentacles and he falls out. And you get the explanation that this thing, if it's the you know, if it's a hundred times larger than its counterpart, you know, what we know of, um, they drink um the victims and spit out the bones. Yeah. So uh or Billy drops into frame, um and he's, the stomach acid of this thing is just completely deteriorated. It's, it's eating him away. And he's still melty, still disappearing. Yeah, yeah, you've and got it's such his... a lovely, and it's a very brave effect because it's done, it's lit incredibly well. It's, yeah, it, it is, yeah. So, you know, um, well, you've got off his, if people have not seen it, it's like kind of his, he, he drops out on his knees, doesn't he? He turns around and he's got like, um, his back of his T-shirt's all ripped open. And as he turns around to face it, he's kind of got his hand up like that. And in the centre of his hand, it's just like, it's nothing there. No even muscles, yeah. but it's just bone. And then he's got this left side of his face almost completely no, off, just skeletal. Yeah. yeah, yeah. No no air or anything like that. Like the t- scalp almost disintegrated. And he's, and it's, I think the fact that sells it is, is the sound the guy makes. It's not like they even got him to just like kind of stand there and drop to the floor. It was that he's gasping for air almost, and like like everyone's thinking, "How oh, is this guy still alive?" And I think it's such an horrific image. Um, yeah. But then, like like you said, it's it's what nineteen ninety eight, so maybe were released ninety eight. So an early ninety eight in America, we didn't get it till like September, I believe. They then I think they guys got it in January or February. So that effect would have been like worked on in 1997. And when you look at, you think it's 2020 and we've both watched this film actually yesterday, or, or, you know, the day before we recorded and not one moment did I think, Oh, you know, that, that's terrible. That, or, or yeah, look at that. And it really does stand up well. And to yeah. say that's really early CGI. It's, um, yeah, I just think there was a lot of love went into the film from there. Oh yeah. 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 And everyone cool. seems to be having a really good time. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's, it's just fun, isn't it? And, and my favourite death is uh, where Studies. Yeah, the leader of the mercenaries. Yeah, I think yeah. it's one of our. It's, it's iconic. What uh, iconic in the sense of when somebody mentions this film to me, it's the first thing my mind goes to. Is is this it's, scene? It's the setup, isn't it? Because the him and it, it's only him and and Kevin J O'Connor left running down a corridor. And, yeah. Um, there's there's a I think I can't remember the line, but he's Kevin O'Connor says something like, "You know, how we're gonna." Get away from it, or whatever. And we feed them something we like that. Feed them, yeah, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Stewie just gets his gun out and shoots Kevin O'Connor in the leg. Um, <laughs> <laughs> there's no, there's not even like I don't think there was a breath or a blink taken from it. It's just automatic gun comes out, bang, leg. It's in the leg, yeah. <laughs> Kevin O'Connor just in his awesomely high pitched way. So, like, yeah. 
<laughs> complains about it and everything. And then he, he it's they get uh, you know this sort of little bits go on, and he finally comes face to face with West Studi again, and the camera sort of pulls out, and you can see the back end of him is mm. slowly being being taken by one of these tentacles, and it's a very slow process. And yeah, West it's not dragged face, him away, has it? It's all no, no, it's no, it's lay on the he's lay on the casino table, isn't he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like the process of him being drunk has already started because he's. Is a complete reaction. West is a complete reaction to it. This, it's just it, without screaming out loud. It's almost like there's a confusion as to what's happening to his own body. Yeah. But with a massive sense of, incredible, you know, almost noiseless. It's almost denial. Pain. I think. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's, yeah. Isn't it? So he's so. I don't Stoic. know. It, <laughs> yeah. <it's>, <laughs> and <laughs> kind of, you know, it's sort of. He's going to run off with the gun, and he gives it him as a a little, you know, end your mercy, life. Yeah, yeah, it's a mercy, isn't it? Yeah, you know, so, so he can, can turn the gun on himself and kill him. <laughs> but he doesn't. He turns the gun on Kevin O'Connor and tries to shoot him again. <laughs> <laughs> it's brilliant. It's been because it's, it was so unexpected. Yeah, it was yeah. so. It was such it's a touching true, moment, wasn't it? Yeah, as well, like... the truth to those characters. Yeah. yeah, they didn't play yeah. out. It was just like you know, his last act was to try and murder this other person, <laughs> even though he's been slowly eaten. It's just great. Yeah, because then we get the mix of relief that, as an audience, that um, Kevin O'Connor's alive still. Yeah, we get him leaned up against the table. We get to see Wes Studi, so we see the gun, and it's just how it's framed with his back towards the what we do don't see we start to think oh is is something going to happen to him yeah. it's not safe we then get a little bit of a jump scare for when he gets the gun and we see where studio and we wonder what's going off and then we see this kind of like he's almost got so much dignity or honor or something that he refuses to be eaten almost so then you've got that like what's going off you got relief to wonder to what's going off to com- comedy yeah. Then back to like, because after obviously he shoots at him and he calls him an asshole and squeals yeah. and walks off. Um, <laughs> he try he then does try to end his own life and 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 yeah. puts the gun to his head, but the, that was the last bullet. Yeah. And then you hear the like, it's almost like he can't take it anymore, so he 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 just bursts out with a scream and and it's like insinuates that obviously it's now kind of ready to drag him and finish him yeah. off. So you get all that in like thirty seconds, and this is accused yeah. a director now that if you would that if you looked at his body of work now, you'd think, where's that level of like yeah. um, storytelling? Where's that level of getting you from to, for you to laugh to, to, to that sense of relief to now? It just seems to be how much CGI can I ram on a screening and give Daniel yeah. um, a few headaches and migraines? <laughs> <laughs> Gonna make some ginger twat in the UK as poorly as I possibly can. This <laughs> <laughs> work yeah. here is done. <laughs> but that's and it's so, so you've got you've got those sort of um, you've got Femi Hansen, you know, Kerry O'Connor, uh, Treat Williams, and to heal left, uh, but they. Um, while Pamuk Janssen's searching around for the key for the um, speed jet ski. Oh, yeah. jet ski. I keep saying yeah. speed, but it is a jet ski. Yeah. 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 Uh, you've got Treat Williams on the boat. He's sorting out one of the torpedoes to sink the ship. Yeah. Because we've had the big encounter with the beast, the big beast. Was, you know, they, they find all the bodies, don't they? They find... All the... And that's a great practical effect. It's yeah, a great practical yeah. effects. It's almost like the skeleton's been spat out, and it's still got some kind of like, like almost like residue. You can see muscle <laughs> kind of remnants yeah, all over yeah. it, and like, yeah. and it looks like mush. Well, it, well, it is structured still, but like when one guy treads on the edge, it doesn't like crack. It just, it's just yeah. mush. Yeah. Um, and I think that's the big scene where it's not scary, but I think like if you're like a, a young person watching the film or, or or like at the right age, so like for a, like 12, 13, you think, oh, but then like equal amounts of, yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> kind yeah. of that kind of gore, isn't it? Mm. Yeah. And, it, and you get the big reveal because it crashes through uh, the bottom of the boat, doesn't it? Yeah. Um, and it's the, I, I can't remember what, what creature they, they say it's it's based on 
Um, but it just seems like a giant pulpy mass. Yeah. With eyes and a, a, a mouth. Um, yeah. How would you like a mouthful of teeth? Um, <laughs> and it is, it's just, and, you know, and that's, again, and you're quite right. I think that's where the CGI lets itself down. Yeah, um, it's like again, it was too ambitious. Yeah, yeah, but I, I, but the, I suppose the other side of that is how would they have approached that practically on that scale? Yeah, absolutely. With it without it looking, I mean, you could have had a giant, you could have had a giant puppet, and that you know that's that's great. Um, but then to marry things properly, you would have have to have had more practical tentacles. Yeah, and that's is... marry the two, and then you're in a whole world of trouble. Um, well, did you speaking of this? Did you did you ever expect it to be some kind of like almost like giant squid like creature? Because I think at that point, everyone that I believe I've spoken to or seen it just would thought it was a thousands of these tentacle like snake like yeah, things. Yeah, so I didn't. I don't yeah. think um, I ever I expected yeah. some reveal. No, no, I wasn't. You know, I think at the time, I think when you just saw these things, you just thought it was these things because they're all. You know, someone says, "Oh, it's." I mean. Beck said she didn't know it was, you know, whether half she didn't know it was going to be a big giant, you know, sea monster. That in that respect, she, you know, she no, watched no. it saying she was on that, you because know, when they it was on the boat, you know, attacking the engineer, and then there was a scene where it was, and she just thought it was one. Oh, she, well, she yeah. went, she went, she went, oh god, that's fast. Because it, yeah. you know, it was in the ship, and it was so, you know, and then it started. Obviously, they all, you, know, you see more than one. But yeah, I just thought originally I think it was just like a collection of mutated sea snakes or you know something, yeah. you know, sort of bizarre like that. But yeah, to see that and it was like yeah, it was it was a nice payoff, and it probably the CGI wouldn't have bothered me back then. It's ninety eight, you know, it's still almost in its infancy and yeah, you know, and I think we were just impressed that we could have something on a bigger scale. Yeah, where we, yeah. that's I think that's, that's what was impressive about it. So you know, you see, you do get that. You get you know. And then um, Anthony Hill tries stealing the boat that's got the arm torpedo on it, and you get the lovely, lovely you know, great fracture. St- <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, it's compound fracture. Yeah, that's brilliant. Oh, cool. But when the when it blows up, because you do get the little chase sequence. You know, yeah, you know, they get on the uh, uh, jet ski. And they, they need to make a jump, so they have to go further down the corridors and they're being chased by all the tentacles, which is a really great sequence. Yeah, um, it's yeah. done really, really well. Um, and it's a nice sort of explosion, cool-looking shot as they are flying through the hole inside of the, the, the ship. And um, and it's nice because they, they make it to an island, which well, they mentioned very briefly before that they can see an island off in the distance because they're out in the middle of nowhere. Uh, and it was what was nice is that originally Kevin O'Connor's character was killed off. Yeah, um, but test audiences didn't like it; they wanted him to live, so you know they changed the ending. Um, so luckily, he comes crawling out of the sea. Um, yeah. <laughs> on the surf, on the surf, uh, yeah, yeah, and and what's great about that is you don't question it, do you? Because the first thing he does is moan to treat Williams that your surfboard nearly cut me in half. <laughs> yeah. You do see, it. I think there's one shot where you see it strapped to the side. Of, yeah, uh, yeah, you do. So it's, it's, it's always so it's not so sort of out of the realms of, of ridiculousness. Um, and they're like looking at this wonderful paradise island, and they're looking around, saying, so, yeah, "It's not too bad," you know. Yeah, <laughs> and then there's a wonderful tease of, there's a massive roar and you know the camera pulls out you get the volcanoes in the background and then something's beaming through the tree line, and it's it's shit it's moving it's massive and it's moving straight towards towards what have become our heroes um rolling credits and i just i wanted more i was wanting i've been wanting a sequel since that moment and i didn't know I didn't realise this, but apparently the whole idea was that it was going to lead into um, Seamus was a pitch a King Kong remake. Yeah, it was going to be um, yeah Skull Island, weren't it? Yeah, because oh, yeah. I also heard it was Journey to Journey to the Center of the Earth and yeah, and, and that, yeah. 
which would have been brilliant if they have, have managed to have maybe have, have, have done a, a Kong film and then maybe even after that it would have been another film that kept these characters and tied them in yeah. almost like a circular fashion of films that were yeah. like, yeah. you know, classic kind of films yeah. going through that. Again, I think obviously he didn't know, did he? Because I think he obviously then pitched the mummy didn't he and he was a big monster yes. movie fan and and mm. and so he obviously went to work um universal was it universal yeah. Yeah. correct yeah yeah so so really his success was the you know for the detriment of deep rising Two, and obviously it didn't make its money but it has found an audience um on DVD and, and, yeah, and VHS. Yeah. So I don't believe, I would say probably from sales and things, I, I'd probably think it, the film's got to have surely made a profit. I don't think it would have recorded a loss. I think it sold so many, like it was, yeah. it's, it was just one of those like late night, everybody bought films, didn't they? I mean, I know everybody buys films now, but in the nineties when DVDs are out, people were going mad for them, weren't they? They were. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah. He, so Steve Jones did say that he, he in the years to come because obviously the, I think he was a bit upset that Disney essentially became the Marvel Star Wars company and that, yeah yeah you know, because they, they did Hollywood pictures that took chances and you know I don't think it, it, it don't feel like they take chances anymore and, and no. um, yeah so Hollywood it's, itself to be fair yeah that's <laughs> it yeah um but he said that he was watching a film in like late 2000s um and it had reused. It was set on a on a ship, and it had reused shots of the interior of um, the ship in Deep Rising. Oh wow! And and he sort of recognised it straight away, and he was like, "I think it won't." If that's the way Disney had to make the money back, mm. even though they're a multi billion dollar company, if that's you know they, they didn't want to keep you know, make a complete loss on it, so they sold it out. And it was a, a, a it was a rival studio as well, so obviously they just used it as archive footage to sell to other companies you know to you know to, to stock footage to go through he said but regardless he doesn't care because he'd have made a small whether it had been pennies it had been pennies going into his bank account for them using that scene and every time it's <laughs> on tv yeah. he'll make some you know <laughs> he'll make something out of it so he says it's not all bad <laughs> <laughs> what, what a way to look at it yeah yeah um, absolutely but yeah, that's another. I think there's a there's a list of films you could possibly have that uh, was had sequels that were never made that should yeah. have had. Um, and oh, I think yeah. that's one I would have loved to. Even if it, it probably would, you know, it might have been terrible a, a King Kong film at that time. You don't know. Um, you know, but uh, or if they've gone a different way, where it's just like a monster island and you know there were yeah. prehistoric creatures on it or whatever. Uh, but I would have loved to have had a. A, a nice sort of full circle send off for those characters just to know that I said well I suppose it's it's nice to know that you, your characters your favourite characters or you know, characters you've grown to love are safe but there's also that because it's a tease I suppose you, it was a, it was a good way to end that film I just, it made me oh, love yeah. more that's the thing that's, yeah 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 I think just going back a second to the um to the effects and stuff. I just did want to say that the ship, when it blows up, how impressive that miniature is that they're yeah, de yeah. they destroy. It's just talking about, It is, because it's almost like it's at odds with itself because the we see the ship start to blow up and in between the ship blowing up, we see the creature that's now breached through the, the, the boat and sat in the atrium, I believe, or wherever, and yeah. it's tentacles everywhere. We see that, like, engulfed in flames and explode and in that there's also a film that i mentioned earlier which was relic yeah and the thing that the, the 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 thing i remember that ties those two films together for me is that when the creature blows up at the end of it it's like you just see it almost like not comically but like it just shatters when it explodes it's just pieces fly everywhere yeah. and it's, it's, it's yeah. very basic cgi early yeah it's the CGI. CGI. Yeah. It's the it's the chunk factory, isn't it? It's like when things blow yeah. up in early CGI, it's just you don't get viscera and blood and gore, you know, like right. what you would do now. It's just it's an explosion, so we'll just throw some slightly darker coloured chunks in the air. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's your explosion. Infinitely better than whatever they, they did in the end of Jaws the Return. Um, <laughs> so you know, it can't be all that bad. But, no, uh, no. You know, there are worse effects. There are a lot worse effects out there. I, I, you know, 
Um, oh, absolutely. But, yeah, it is that sort of age old thing of, oh, yeah, let's, let's, you know, something's blowing up, so we'll, we'll forget right. about potential anatomy. We'll just, here's your fire, here's your chunks, it's dead. Yeah, so it reminds me of. Um, that if you've played any of the Mortal Kombat games on the, you know, when it was like 2D on the on the Mega yeah. Drive and stuff, and you used to perform a fatality, and you'd when a character would explode, they'd have eight rib cages, four arms. Um, <laughs> it wouldn't matter if the character was a black guy or a white guy; he'd have the same color like torso and and the two brains and stuff. And it was just like doesn't matter; it doesn't have to be um, doesn't have to be correct. You know, yeah. biology out the window; <laughs> it's just a mess. <laughs> So it, it does remind me of that. It's it's quite funny that Relic came out at a similar. I think Relic was probably a year or two early than that, and that's the same thing. You've got like this prehistoric creature that's uh, engulfed in flames, explodes, and it's just almost like somebody's got a drawing of the character, cut it with scissors, and then just <laughs> thrown it into the air. <laughs> Preach confetti. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Sounds like a great <laughs> studio name, that. Does it? Preach Confetti. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's t shirt. T shirt. Like yeah. <laughs> <laughs> sort of steals it. Uh, but I, was, I wanted to touch on um, Femi Ganson, was that she, uh, I think she'd done a film before Goldeneye, but then Goldeneye was a big breakthrough. Yeah. And I think the studio, because they, they hired Claire Fellani first. And yeah, I think she, true, she yeah. worked. Yeah. I think she worked for three days and then started. You know, Aaron Stevenson was weren't getting on. Um, so they had Frank Jensen, um, who did turn around and say, I don't want to be playing, you know, femme fatales all the time. I don't want to be playing, you know, the, the pretty girl in distress or whatever. Um, and Stevenson said something like, you'll only be the sex symbol when it's necessary. And, you know, and that's, that's part of her character to seduce or, or you'd be playful with people, so she's in that slinky red dress at the start. But then the rest of the film, she's all Ellen Ripley. She's all sort of you know white vest shirt and plimsolls. Plimsolls, yeah, yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. Take <laughs> take note, Jurassic World. Um, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but uh, yeah, which but it's 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 nice that she she gets to play what possibly for her was against type. Yeah, in that respect, because you know a next big thing after that was X-Men. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, she, she had that nice, she had that nice sort of variation throughout her career. It's not being yeah, I, I remember her from going from that to uh, um, How Someone Wanted to Deal with Jeffrey Rush. Yes, yeah. And then, t- yes, I mean, obviously it wasn't a massive hit, that wasn't at all. Um, I, again, off the top of my head, I can't remember whether it was flop or not, but, um, Another film that I uh, re- don't know whether it's because I remember it fondly and watching it on um, on DVD, but I've I've still got a soft spot for it and oh, Chris Kattan and yeah. The list. Yeah, 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 I yeah, think definitely. so definitely. Yeah. Um, and it's 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 got some interesting ideas, some interesting CGI and and stuff. But I remember a, um, definitely remember that. And then I think that a year later it was X Men, and then I don't think she's looked back from that. I mean, she's got a nice a, a, a great little film that was made. Um, Late two thousands, early twenty ten, something like that. Um, Hundred feet. Have you heard of it? I've heard of it. I've not seen it. Yeah, maybe again. Maybe that might be a a, a nice one for us to watch. As somebody who's who's seen it before me, and then you to uh, uh, first watch years later. Um, <laughs> Does she turn into a centipede? Um. Oh, you've seen no, <laughs> no, <laughs> no, not at all. No, no. So again, and that was nice because that's again a, another after a x-men days a nice touch to go back to you know like deep rising yeah um, house haunted hill which i'll keep wanting to call haunting of hill house because of the netflix series but yeah it's um yeah so no i was i was it's a nice little role for her i thought she did really well i thought she had quite a few comical um facial expressions and and stuff and she clearly looked like she was having really well, good she fun holds her own against all the, the gents doesn't yeah. she yeah you know, she's equally, she's just as, as, as uh, rough and tumble, you know, she's just rough and ready as the, the rest of them. Yeah. And, yeah, and I can't imagine Claire Falani working because I think that Fran Kenson's quite tall, isn't she? And yeah. and not imposing by any means, but I think she, her stature works as, as for the yeah. character and, and to pull off everything that, that, that they wanted that character to do. So I think, you know, it's, 
fate was right. I think Claire Solana as well, and um, for you know, it's not a career. Obviously, it's not a career that I've, I've followed, but other than sort of uh, Meet Joe Black and Mystery Men, um, yeah. she sort of seemed to be at, the, at that time stuck in that sort of romantic lead. Um, yeah sort of uh, the romantic character anyway so it might be nice to play see her play against type yeah uh, but we got you know we got a really strong performance out of Hank Jansen so it, it's you know some it's nice when these things don't work out for some people because it it works out better yeah yeah definitely and yeah and I think you're right I think you've hit the nail on the head there for me it'd have been great to see I mean like mentioned our last episode Robocop it was great to see um Kirkwood Smith and Ronnie Cox be cast against mm. type, but sometimes yeah. things don't work out. And with well, the film, Harrison Ford vehicle, it would have been. And instead, I think it may have been a film we just spoke about going, oh, that monster movie kind of flop, Harrison Ford, that instead this budget may have made everyone focus, made mm. Stephen Summers may have made him. Um, more eager to prove himself and, yeah. and and to me i'm i'm a massive harrison ford fan i'm i'm the firm believer that not tom hanks but harrison ford is probably the best actor i've ever seen um because i think he's understated it's brilliant and i also think he's probably the last great hollywood legend leading man yeah. In, yeah. in my opinion um, i would say i don't i might be wrong with my dates and my years and that but i would have thought <clears throat> he probably skipped out on that film and then went on to do Air Force One around that time. Would that be yeah, right? Yeah, I think, I think, yeah, 98, which, yeah. Which is, if if you're looking at films in Ford's career, and there's, there's not, I can't think there's many, had been any, if not, you know, people might disagree, but in, any sort of missteps, I think people, you know, some people might think maybe regarding Henry's probably not one of his strongest. Um, yeah. uh, but, um, you know, after his sort of Jack Ryan, movies but yeah air force one comes on which i always took as the like the third jack ryan film yeah was, you, know, you could almost say if, if he'd been president ryan um yeah, yeah that it, would have bad an eyelid would you that's it yeah you just got on with it and it's again so it's not all bad if Harrison Ford's turning down you know um uh, deep rising so to do air force one which is a great film in itself but, yeah then you fall, you land on your feet because you've got Treat Williams, and yeah, you know, there's not many sort of le- massive leading, main leading roles for him throughout his career. No, I've done a lot of theatre and a lot of TV. And he has done quite a few films, but not to the extent I don't think where he's been up front and centre. It's the only one that pops into my mind, and I, you know, apologise if there's anyone who thinks you know there's something we might have missed, but um, is the Phantom. And he's the well, it, villain. It's, it's, yeah. <laughs> it's his death scene in that film when he's kind of concentrating. He just lets out an excited squeal right at the end. I think it's fantastic. <laughs> and again, it's one of those films that everyone sort of panned and people, I don't think, it, it might be something we revisit, I don't know, because I think yeah. he's great in it. Billy Zane's great in it. it again, it's, there's a great, great, great cast in, 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 in The Phantom. But I think people just didn't get it. And it's it's too with, early, weren't it? I yeah, it's, it's very tongue-in-cheek. And it's the same with Big Trouble in China. People just didn't get it at the time. Yeah, yeah uh, I, think, I think you're right. And I think maybe that's probably the same thing. We, I think releasing it you know, around the same time as Titanic, maybe not having Treat Williams not being as, as established as a leading man as yeah. quite a few actors at that time who... who you probably you put some people might have thought it would have been better soon. I don't know. Um, yeah, it, so yeah, there was a lot of factors against it, but it is it is a proper. It's, I think people might call it a hidden gem, but it's it's not, it's never been hidden. It's always been out there. Yeah, um, but I, I, people should. I think people should go out and discover it. It's if they've not. You know, again, it's one of these films that I could quite happily say if you've not seen it, go and give it a watch because it's just fun. It's just it's it's a stupid amount of fun. And even well, if you're yeah. thinking, oh, that's, you know, it's a daft B movie, but I enjoyed it. Then yeah, and and, and I think like from my point of view, I probably watched it like probably I've probably seen it probably five times in my life, and mm. I've never like lost any amount of enjoyment from it. And this yeah, time, yeah. I'm thinking, 
oh yeah every time i mentioned it before like oh deep rise oh deep rising you know kind of fond memories and yeah. like i said we i watched the film and not watched it probably 15 plus years and yeah loved it well when we were doing the list for series you know for, for this series and um we we're looking at what films to come in there's like the typical things that come in, oh well, these we need to do a star wars this year and we need to do this this year and we need to do this whatever and you came along with oh let's do deep rising and i was just like smiling straight to <laughs> Like, yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. I think that's the. Yeah, sorry. Go on, sorry. No, I was just going to say, sorry, yeah. not, not only is it just a, a good excuse to watch it again after not watching it for so many years, but it's also a, a good chance to talk about it and, and have other people discover it, you know, like find its audience again. Yeah, and I think that's what I was just going to say. It leads in perfectly. I'm glad to let you speak first. Um, it leads in perfectly <laughs> to, to, to what I was going to say. And that's like, I think. Obviously, Star Wars. He doesn't know Star Wars. People may not have watched Star Wars, but people, you know, it's general. It's 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 iconic. It's um, it's it is cinema. It is a blockbuster. It is yeah. the blockbuster. But there are going to be films that that, um, especially in the kind of horror sci-fi genre, that I think we both agreed on, don't we? Need to hit the big films and we need to hit the classics. But also, it would be nice for us to. Um, because, like I said, like me picking up an Empire magazine, never picked up one before, thinking, "Wow, this film looks great." To then my dad to go and rent that film when I was yeah. probably like sixteen, seventeen, or fifteen, maybe around that age anyway, teens. Um, that was accidental. So if we, if if somebody watches our podcast, thinks, you know what, I've not seen that, I'll give it a watch and enjoy it. I mean, that to me is like it's it's the word of mouth. That they're, yeah. Yeah. They're, that's that to me is almost better than. A critical reception of of um yeah oh this is great go out and see it actually like two people like me and you that can sit and chat about it for a while and say you know watch it for what it is um and you won't be disappointed mm. and i think that that kind of is a bit of our ethos yeah. i don't know if you'd agree that we want to just get those films out there that may have been long forgotten about or that never kind of got the the actual maybe critical reception that, that yeah. they deserve. Like this film at its worst is an enjoyable B movie experience yeah. with, with with some great performances. For it to be on the list of worst films of nineteen ninety eight to me is 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 horrific. Yeah. I think yeah. somebody's gone into I think Ebert and Siskel went into that film and I don't know what they were thinking. I think they must have either been pissed off by Treat Williams or somebody in that studio or just been <laughs> having a bad day because the yeah. film is not the film's not wanting you to like like it. The film's wanting to take you on a journey and a little adventure, yeah. take your brain out for a minute. So, yeah, I don't get it. Um, so, um, I think I think people listening or watching have got um, no doubt in the mind by now how much we <laughs> love the film and uh, Mr. Williams. But is there anything anything you'd like to to end on? Anything particular you've either thought of or, or no, anything to say to people? No, I think again, just just you know, please go out and, and and watch it, make your own mind up. And it's this, it's you know, it's it's on Blu-ray now, and the transfer was that we watched was very really nice. It was such a good, the, 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 the sound as well. The sound had done yeah. a really good job of the mix. Um, but yeah, just go and go and discover it for yourselves, and you know, let us know what you think. Um, if you think we're wrong, then great. You know, it's always good to have a. A, a sound off and a bit of banter and and, and tell yeah. us what I think we're wrong. That's you know, that's what we're here for. But we hope, and me certainly, I know I'm sure you do. That we hope that you you enjoy it just as much as oh we, yeah, because it is just it's 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 what I call a hoot. It is. I would give it five treats out of five. And I know people are going to say, well, a lot of these films you like, and you give them five out of five. But my scale of five out of five means. That for, I, I base a film, I rate it, I don't go, right, here's every five star film. What I say is, how good this film's a certain genre, a certain amount of money spent on it, a certain caliber of actor or director. Yeah. So it, to me, it, it's its potential. Yeah, it's, it's a film's around. every bit of its potential. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, it's a, it's a definite all rounder. And it, it doesn't, you can't. You can't mark it down again, like we talk about CGI. You can't mark it down for that because that's that's all that's what they had to go with on a small budget. I think they lost part of the budget because they they were going to film um, in LA in the giant water tank in LA. Yeah, you know, like two hundred thousand dollars to film in it. So they went to Vancouver um, and built one 
But yeah, yeah they, they, they flooded the, the town. Uh, <laughs> and it cost them $600,000 in damages, I think. Mm. So, you know, um, swings and roundabouts. But yeah, uh, yeah no, I think you're right, mate. It's an all round. It, well, I said it was all round, but you're right. It, it, it reached its potential. It's, and to, to have the people who have seen it and talk about it fondly, to see that they're still talking about it fondly and they're still. Again, what you said yeah. about the score, people still have a, a big affinity for the score. And, you know, it says a lot for a film that didn't make much of a dent in the box office, Yeah, you know, back in the day. Yeah. yeah. I, can't, but, yeah. I, can't, I can't, can't disagree. I think it's, um, I think it is one of those I'll probably revisit more frequently now. Mm. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, really, really enjoy it. I think, like, I watched it with my um, wife yesterday, and she re- the first time she'd ever seen it, and she loved it. Yeah. And I could tell because she she didn't say a word, and I don't mean that kind, but I always kind of, you know, don't you, when somebody's bored yeah. and watching yeah. it or not paying attention, but she was, you know, like, yeah. like there and enjoying it and, and took it for what it was and, you know, yeah. had a real good time, and I think that's the most you can have from it. So um, go out and watch it. So before we uh, go... Um, kind of, you know, we'll do what we normally do. Have you got a, um, a little hint what we may be covering next time? I certainly have. Farewell and adieu to you, fair Spanish ladies. Farewell and adieu to you, ladies of Spain. For I've received orders to sail back to Boston. So never more shall we see you again. Uh, uh, oh, that's uh, absolutely beautiful singing voice you have there. Thank and I you cannot very wait much. to review Star Trek II The Wrath of Khan. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Spock. <laughs> yeah, so as, as usual, um, we would really appreciate a like if you enjoyed the um, content. Um, subscribe if you're happy um, with what we're doing. And obviously, we're going to try and get a few more kind of different videos out there from um obviously we've got our podcast which is a regular staple of what we want to yeah. do but we're also going to be doing feature videos maybe some short kind of reviews in the future and stuff and, and as always let us know if there's anything you want us to cover or any kind of ideas you want us to do um and you can find us uh, facebook twitter instagram anchor youtube um your bank on everywhere yeah 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 sky google earth um <laughs> so yeah i just want to thank you guys for listening to us or watching us and um yeah it's goodbye from me and goodbye from me see you later goodbye <laughs>